Okay, so crucial conversations. That's what uh, we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. Crucial conversations. Tools for talking when stakes are high. The summary in brief. Relationships are the priority of life. And conversations help us care for our relationships with talking and listening. The quality of your life comes out of the quality of your dialogues and conversations. Crucial Conversations by Kerry Patterson, Joseph Grenny, Ron McMillan, and Al Switzler, the founders of Vital Smots, help you, help you think about what you really want to say. With structure and wit, this best-selling book provides readers with a way to improve on the most fundamental element of organizational learning and growth, honest, unencumbered dialogue between individuals. The authors address the number one reason managers and executives get derailed and offer helpful guidance on how to operate in a fast-paced, results-oriented environment. They provide readers with the tools to handle life's most difficult and important conversations. This summary describes how anyone can master the skills of crucial conversations at home, work, and play. The skills it delivers offers new techniques for working together in ways that enable us to succeed. You learn how to transform crucial conversations from frightening events into interactions that yield success and results. You'll never have to worry about another conversation again, thanks to the most important set of skills you'll ever master. In this summary, you will learn how to prepare for high stakes situations with a proven technique, how to transform anger and hurt feelings into powerful dialogue, how to make it safe to talk about almost anything, how to be persuasive, not abrasive, and also how new techniques, skills, and tools work together to enable successful crucial conversations. What's a crucial conversation? A crucial conversation is a discussion between two or more people where stakes are high, opinions vary, and emotions run strong. The effects of conversations go bad can be both devastating and far-reaching, Research has shown that strong relationships, careers, organizations, and communities all draw from the same source of power, the ability to talk openly about high stakes, emotional controversial topics. Masters of Crucial Conversations 25 years of research with 20,000 people and hundreds of organizations has taught experts that individuals who are the most influential, who can get things done, and at the same time build on relationships are those who master the, their crucial conversations. People who routinely hold crucial conversations and hold them well are able to express controversial and even risky opinions in a way that gets heard. Their bosses, peers, and direct reports listen without becoming defensive or angry. Improve your organization and health. In the best companies, everyone holds everyone else accountable, regardless of level or position. The path to high productivity passes not through a static system, but through face-to-face -face conversations at all levels. The ability to hold crucial conversations also has an impact on your personal health. The evidence, the evidence is mounting every day. The negative feelings we hold in, the emotional pain we suffer, and the constant battering we endure as we stumble our way through unhealthy conversations slowly eat away at our health. In some cases, the impact of failed conversations lead to minor problems. In others, it results in disaster. In all cases, failed conversations never make us happier, healthier, or better off. Mastering crucial conversations. Dialogue is a free flow of meaning between two or more people. Each of us enters conversations with our own opinions, feelings, and theories, and experiences about the topic at hand. This unique combination of thoughts and feelings makes up our pers personal pool of meaning. This pool not only informs us, but also propels our every action. When two or more people of us enter crucial conversations, by definition, we don't share the same pool. Our opinions differ. Filling the pool of shared meaning 
People who are skilled at dialogue do their best to make it safe for everyone to add their meaning to the shared pool. Even ideas that at first glance appear controversial, wrong, or at odds with their own beliefs. Now, obviously, they don't agree with every idea. They simply do their best to ensure that all ideas find their way into the open. As a pool of shared meaning grows, it helps people in two ways. First, as individuals are exposed to more accurate and relevant information, they make better choices in a very real sense. In a very real sense, the pool of shared meaning is a measure of a group's IQ. I'm sorry, I, uh, let's go back to IQ. The larger the shared pool, the smarter, the smarter the decisions. And even though many people may be involved in a choice, when people openly and freely share ideas, the increased time investment is more than offset by the quality of the decision. On the other hand, we've all seen what happens when the shared pool is dangerously, dangerously shallow. When people purposefully withhold meaning from one another, individually smart people can do collectively stupid things. Better choices. Not only does the shared pool of uh, help individuals make better choices, but since the meaning is shared, people willingly act on whatever decision they make. As people sit through an open discussion where ideas are shared, they take part in the free flow of meaning. Eventually, they understand why the shared solution is the best solution, and they're committed to act. Conversely, when people aren't involved, when they sit back quietly during touchy conversations, they are rarely committed to the final decision. Since their ideas remain in their heads and their opinions never make it into the pool, they end up quietly criticizing and passively resisting. Worse still, when others force their ideas into the pool, people have a harder time accepting the information. The time you spend up front establishing a shared pool of meaning is more than paid, paid for by faster, more committed action later on. Start with heart. How do you encourage the flow of meaning in the face of differing opinions and strong emotions? The truth is, people can change, but it requires work. You can't simply drink a magic potion and walk away renewed. Instead, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself. In fact, this is the first principle of dialogue. Start with heart. That is your own heart. If you can't get yourself right, you'll have a hard time getting dialogue right. When conversations become crucial, you'll resort to the forms of communication that you've grown up with. Debate, silent treatment, manipulation, and so on. Work on me first. Although it's true that there are times when we're merely bystanders in life's never-ending stream of head-on collisions, Rarely are we completely innocent. More often than not, we do something to contribute to the problems we're experiencing. People who are best at dialogue understand this simple fact and turn it into the principle, work on me first. They realize that not only are they likely to benefit by improving their own approach, but also that they're the only person they can work on anyway. As much as others may need to change, or we may want them to change, the only person we can continually inspire, prod, and shape with any degree of success is the person in a the mirror. There are, there's a certain irony embedded in this fact. People who believe they need to start with themselves do just that. As they work on themselves, they also become the most skilled at dialogue. So here's the irony. It's the most talented, not the least talented, who are continually, continue, continually trying to improve their dialogue skills. Stay focused. Skilled people start with heart. That is, they begin high-risk discussions with the right motives, and they stay focused no matter what happens. They maintain focus in two ways. First, they're steely-eyed smart when it comes to knowing what they want. Despite constant invitations to slip away from their goals, they stick with them. Second, skilled people don't like sucker's choices, either or choices. Unlike others who justify their unhealthy behavior by explaining that they had no choice but to fight or take flight, the dialogue smart believe 
that dialogue, no matter the circumstances, is always an option. Refocus your brain. You're speaking with someone who completely disagrees with you on a hard issue. How does all this goal stuff apply? As you begin the discussion, start by examining your motives. Going in, ask yourself what you really want. Also, as the conversation unfolds and you find yourself starting to say, defer to the boss or give your spouse a cold shoulder, pay attention to what's happening to your objectives. Step away from the interaction and look at yourself. Much like an outsider, once you call into question the shifting desires of your heart, you can make conscious choices to change them. Return to dialogue. Stop and ask yourself some questions that return to dialogue, return you to dialogue. What do I really want for my life, for myself? What do I really want for others? What do I really want for the relationship? How would I behave if I really wanted these results? Learn to look. As people begin to feel unsafe, they start down one of two unhealthy paths. They move either to silence, withholding meaning from, for, from the pool, or to violence, trying to force meaning in the pool. Silence almost always is done as a means of avoiding potential problems, and it always restricts the flow of meaning. The three most common forms of silence are masking, avoiding, and withdrawing. Masking consists of understanding or selectively showing our true opinion. Sarcasm, or shark, sarcasm, sugarcoating, and couching are some of the more popular forms. Avoiding involves steering completely away from sensitive subjects. We talk, but without addressing the real issues. Withdrawing means pulling out of a conversation altogether. We either exit the conversation or exit the room. Violence consists of any verbal strategy that attempts to com convince, control, or compel others to accept your point of view. Methods range from name-calling and monologuing to making threats. The three most common forms are controlling, labeling, and attacking. Controlling consists of coercing others to your way of thinking. This includes cutting others off, overstating your facts, speaking in absolutes, changing subjects, or using directive questions to control the conversation. Labeling is putting a label on people or ideas so they can be dismissed under a general stereotype or category. Attacking includes belittling and threatening. Look for your style under stress. When caught up in a crucial conversation, it's difficult to see exactly what's going on and why. When a discussion starts to become stressful, we often end up doing the exact opposite of what works. We turn to the less healthy components of our style under stress. To break from this insidious cycle, learn to look. Here's how. Learn to look at content and conditions. Look for when things become crucial. Learn to watch for safety problems. Look to see if others are moving towards silence or violence. Look for outbreaks of your style under stress. Most people toggle between holding back and becoming too forceful during stressful or crucial conversations. But typical behaviors can change. By identifying your style under stress, you can make a special effort to avoid some of your silence or violence habits. Also, when you're in the middle of a crucial conversation, you can be more conscious of what to watch for. Make it safe. When others move to silence or violence, step out of the conversation and make it safe. When safety is restored, go back to the issue at hand and continue the dialogue. The key is to step out of the content of the conversation. Don't stay stuck in what's being said. Next, decide which condition of safety is at risk. Here are some questions you can ask about each, con each condition of safety. Mutual purpose. Do others believe you care about their goals in this conversation? Do they trust your motives? Mutual respect. Do others believe you respect them? Apologize when appropriate. When you've made a mistake that has hurt others, for example, you didn't call your team to let them, let them know that uh, presentation plans were changed, start with an apology. When you've cl clearly violated respect, apologize. An apology is a statement that sincerely expresses your sorrow for your role in causing, or at least not preventing pain or difficulty to others. 
Contrast to fix misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Sometimes people feel disrespected during a crucial conversation, even though we haven't done anything disrespectful. An apology is not or isn't appropriate in these circumstances. It would be disingenuous to admit you were wrong when you weren't. How then can you rebuild mutual purpose or mutual respect in order to make it safe to get back to dialogue? When others misunderstand either your purpose or your intent, step out of the argument and rebuild safely by using a skill called contrasting. Contrasting is a don't do statement that addresses others' concerns that you don't respect them or that you've, you have a malicious purpose. The don't part Conf confirms your respect or clarifies the real purpose, the do part. Crib, to get to mutual purpose, C-R-I-B. When you're at cross purposes, step out of the con content of the conflict. Stop focusing on who thinks what. Then C-R-I-B your way back to mutual purpose. C, commit, R, recognize, I, invent, B, brainstorm. Commit to seek mutual purpose. Make a unilateral public commitment to stay in the conversation until you've come up with something that serves everyone. Recognize the purpose behind the strategy. Ask people why they want what they're pushing for. Separate what they're demanding from the purpose it serves. Invent a mutual purpose. If after clarifying everyone's purposes, you are still at odds, see if you can invent a higher or longer term purpose that is more motivating than the ones that keep you in conflict. Brainstorm new strategies. Search for, for a solution that serves everyone. Master my stories. We're going to leave that part for part two from this video. Mm, it's kind of long, so we'll continue in, that, in a little in part two. Have a wonderful day.